According to Ranker.com, these are the 15 greatest non-canon Naruto ships. Number 1. Yahiko and Konan Yahiko and Konan never get around to being an official canon couple, but it looks pretty obvious they care for each other deeply. The two are willing to go to war with Konoha together, putting their lives on the line to protect each other. Their interactions heavily hint at romantic feelings, and if they were more than villains whose main appearances happen in childhood flashbacks and battle sequences, they might actually act on those feelings in the anime. And yeah, I completely agree with this ship. I think it's pretty obvious that they definitely have feelings for each other, and it's pretty heavily implied that they kiss during this scene, so I'd be hard pressed to fully say that it's not canon. I feel like most fans would agree that this was definitely a thing, but at the same time, they never officially showed it, so I get why it's not canon. Also, shouts out to Nagato for standing guard while the boy Yahiko learned origami. Number two, Izumo and Kotetsu. While this pairing feels canon, it's never officially stated, so it counts. Izumo and Kotetsu work together on nearly every mission they are assigned. In fact, they are so dedicated to each other that when Kotetsu undertakes a solo mission involving an ostrich, he nearly lets the ostrich murder him because he simply can't function without Izumo. Izumo and Kotetsu is just one of those relationships that would be canon if it weren't part of a shonen anime from the early 2000s. And first of all, before anything else, I think this might actually be the first time I knew their names. And secondly, they definitely do have a very, very heavy bromance, that's for sure. Whether it's actually a legit romance, I'm not entirely convinced, but at the same time, hey, they might be right due to the fact that this is an early 2000s anime where the whole concept of gay relationships wasn't really talked about as much back then. I definitely could see that if this had come out in later years, it might have actually been implied. Number 3. Naruto and Sasuke The relationship between Naruto and Sasuke emerged as probably the most popular one in the Naruto fandom, excluding the canon pairings. This happened for a reason. Out of everyone Naruto encounters throughout the series, Sasuke receives the most of his affection. The titular character willingly risks his life to save Sasuke from getting himself killed in the pursuit of revenge. He never gives up on him and loves him unconditionally, even when he becomes an enemy of the state. For Sasuke, someone who lost his entire family to a series of brutal murders, having someone always at your back no matter what proves invaluable. However you choose to interpret it, the love between these two is real. And first of all, I don't know what this article is talking about because this is absolutely a canon pairing, duh. You already know that Sasuke and Naruto clash Chidori and Rasengan every time Sasuke comes back and visits the Hokage office. But in all seriousness, I actually do really wish this was real because I would much rather have a little Sasuto running around instead of Boruto. Number 4. Karin and Soigetsu Eventually, Karin will realize Sasuke doesn't reciprocate her feelings and turn her attention elsewhere. Perhaps to another member of Team Taka, a ragtag group of escapees from Orochimaru's laboratory. Team Taka's initial goal involves helping Sasuke track down Itachi. Jugo is a little too serious for Karin, but she boasts a great dynamic with Soigetsu. The two constantly trade sarcastic barbs, but beneath all the bickering lies genuine respect for each other as comrades and as people, and maybe even something more. And yeah, I definitely agree with this ship. It makes a thousand times more sense than her love for Sasuke because he smiled at her. They actually have witty banter and good chemistry, and sure, it's not canonically shown that they're together, but they do live together. So you never know what happens when Jugo is asleep and or hanging out with a squirrel. Number 5. Madara and Hashirama Madara and Hashirama are two of the most powerful legendary ninja in Konoha history, and a love story between the two could be equally so. While the two have decidedly different ideas about how to go about running the newly formed city, they also possess immense respect for one another and consider the other a proper rival. With all of that intense emotion flying around, it wouldn't be at all surprising if the two of them occasionally turned that passion into something that didn't involve fighting. And I actually don't fully agree with this ship, I think it's a bit more one-sided. Because I think Hashirama is straight, but Madara definitely loves him some wood style. Like my man almost deep forest emergence as soon as he saw Hashirama during the war. Number 6. Boruto and Sarada 
Boruto and Sarada start out finding the other as irritating as their respective parents once found each other, but as they start to go on more missions together, they begin to develop rapport and respect each other's abilities. The two of them push each other to be better versions of themselves. Boruto encourages Sarada to help other people when she'd rather stay uninvolved, and Sarada tries to help Boruto understand and empathize with his father. Mitsuki even says repeatedly that he thinks they should start dating. Whether or not they'll ultimately get together remains to be seen. Naruto likes to surprise its viewers with unusual endgame pairings after all, but so far, these two share a lot of chemistry. And yeah, I definitely think they're going to end up together by the end of the series. Because despite what this article says, I definitely think that the Naruto series usually does foreshadow who people will end up with very early on in the series, aka Hinata liking Naruto, Sakura liking Sasuke, uh, Ino liking uh, Sai because he kind of just looks like Sasuke. And it's kind of heavily implied that Sarada has some sort of crush on Boruto, so we'll see what happens. Number 7. Rock Lee and Tenten Though a fun character, Tenten sees little romantic development during Naruto, especially not when compared to her other teammates. It would be awesome to see her actually get an arc to herself, one that involves developing a romantic relationship with her teammate, Lee. While Lee is definitely more ridiculous than Tenten is, the two of them share a lighthearted approach to life, but they can both get serious when necessary. More than just partners on multiple ninja missions, they go through the unique experience of being taught by Guy while mourning also the loss of their teammate Neji. What's more, there's a fan theory suggesting Metal, Lee's son, might also be Tenten's. This isn't confirmed by canon, but he does kind of look like her. And yeah, I'm definitely one of those people that is convinced that these two are actually married and that Metal is their son. Because not only has it mentioned that Metal does somewhat look like Tenten, it's not only that, but the fact that he is also known to be pretty proficient at ninja tools, which, um, hmm, who else is proficient at ninja tools other than the Chun-Li lookalike? Number 8. Kakashi and Iruka What? While Kakashi and Iruka interact little in canon, they make for a remarkably popular pairing, especially in the Japanese fandom. They share a mutual investment in Naruto's well-being, as well as their similar careers in teaching and training new ninja. Besides that, both of them experience some pretty dramatic losses in their lives. Nearly everyone Kakashi ever loves dies, while Iruka's parents die when the QB attacks, leaving him orphaned. Rough paths are something to bond over, which could be another basis for the popular pairing. And yeah, I don't know what Japan was thinking with this one. They, as it stated, barely interact at all, so I just have no clue where this came from. Shipping these two together is like shipping the ramen guy with Jiraiya, because they also both have a mutual interest in Naruto. Number 9. Rock Lee and Gata. Though Rock Lee and Gata begin their relationship on bad terms, that's true of just about everyone Gata interacts with. After their initial battle, they help each other out repeatedly, from offering support during battle to more innocent moments like figuring out a wedding present for Naruto and Hinata. Lee's unrelentingly positive attitude provides a great foil for Gata's darker tendencies. He'll make sure he doesn't veer off too far in a negative direction. And yeah, this is another ship that I just don't really understand because after the fact of their initial fight and then fighting against Kimimaru, they don't really interact with each other for the rest of the series. Like, I feel like they have a mutual respect for each other's strength and fighting capabilities and things like that, but it's not like they're super deep homies that are hanging out every day, building sand castles and doing push-ups. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this scene where they try and find Naruto and Hinata a wedding gift is the only time they interact with each other throughout the entirety of Shippuden other than a few minor clips during the war. Number 10. Sakura and Ino There's nothing like two girls who used to fight over the same boy realizing what they truly valued wasn't the boy, it was each other. Sakura and Ino, best friends as little girls, have their friendship fall apart when they start fighting over Sasuke's affections. To many viewers, this conflict has nothing to do with Sasuke and everything to do with their increasing desire to one-up each other as they get closer to achieving their goals as ninja. In canon, Sakura's feelings for Sasuke deepen into something real, and Ino forges a relationship with Sai, 
but it would have been pretty cool if the two best friends relationship transformed into a romantic one. And yeah, I don't necessarily agree with this one either, because, I mean, yeah, sure, they're friends and rivals, but at the same time, I just don't see any sort of romantic connection between these two. Just because they have a mutual crush on Sasuke and a rivalry doesn't mean that they're a perfect shipping by any means. Shipping these two is like shipping Naruto and Rock Lee because they both had a crush on Sakura. Number 11, Kakashi and Guy. Considering how often Kakashi and Guy seem to go on vacation together in Boruto, it wouldn't be surprising if something goes on behind the scenes. These two have known each other since childhood, and while their personalities are complete opposites, they appear to find the others endearing, if a little exasperating too. They trust and respect each other implicitly, and share an ease of interaction Kakashi never exhibits with anyone else. Besides that, their ridiculous rivalry is straight up adorable. And see, this one makes a lot more sense than shipping the pink trash can and the Wi-Fi router. These two are childhood rivals just like Sakura and Ino, but unlike the latter, these two are also actually quote-unquote single. Not to mention, as the article stated, these two do spend a lot of time together, especially in Boruto, as I'm pretty sure Kakashi is the one that mainly pushes around Guy's wheelchair. So you never know, Kakashi could have introduced Guy to the Ichiichi novels. Number 12, Naruto and Gara. Naruto manages to convince Gara to give up a life of violence and replace it with service to others. He does this by empathizing with Gara's history and showing him a new way to exist in the world. The fact that a single conversation between the two of them leaves such an impact on Gara's life is incredible, and it probably means he needs more Naruto in his life. For Naruto's part, he appears delighted whenever he sees Gara and feels incredibly proud of him for becoming Kazekage. And as far as this one goes, I think this is again more similar to Madara and Hashirama, in the sense that this is a bit more one-sided, where Naruto probably thinks of Gara as more like a homie, and Gara wants to show Naruto how to build a sandcastle. Number 13, Shikamaru and Ino. Shikamaru and Ino were born one day apart and have been close friends ever since. While they go through a phase of bickering and rivalry, they eventually develop a healthy respect for one another through shared experiences on Team 10. Shouts out to Jake Paul. What brings these two closer together, closer than either ever becomes with childhood friend Choji, is that both of them lost their fathers in the 4th Shinobi World War, which gives them the opportunity to bond over tragedy. And while I think that it's absolutely cap in them saying that these two aren't close with Choji as they are them because Shikamaru is absolutely closer with Choji than he is Ino, I still do think that these two are a great ship and debatably better than the people that they actually ended up with because sure, there was some decently good chemistry with Shikamaru and Tamari, Sai and Ino didn't really make that much sense, but it is what it is. I still think that these two definitely logically made the most sense throughout the story, but I'm good with Shikamaru and Tamari as well. Number 14, Naruto and Sakura. Naruto and Sakura may not end up together in canon, but they could have made a great couple. Working together since they were 12 years old, they both experience a rocky start when they first meet. But over the course of the series, they go to HFIL and back together and obviously care about each other deeply. And yeah, let's be honest here guys, these two ending up together makes a lot more sense than Sasuke and Sakura. And don't get me wrong, I definitely like Naruto and Hinata together. But Sasuke and Sakura literally makes no sense because they have literally zero chemistry other than the fact that Sakura likes Sasuke because he looks like a Hot Topic employee. While these two had similar chemistry to Minato and Kushina, so this makes way more sense. Number 15, Tsunade and A. Can true love blossom through flexing contests? Definitely. Tsunade and A are both leaders of their respective nations, which means both of them are well acquainted with the pressures that come with lots of responsibility. More than just being leaders, they also share similar interests, including working out until they're totally shredded and getting drunk. The two could have a fun, relaxed, mutually supportive relationship, and they somewhat do in one episode of Rock Lee and his Ninja Pals. So, hey, actual Naruto canon, get on this. And yeah, I definitely agree. These two definitely have great chemistry. It would make a great ship. And I honestly have no complaints over this. They get along great in the series. But I am also angry 
because while this ship is great, this is the last ship on this list. And so I do have one important question. Where the flap is Jiraiya and Tsunade?